Uh, I've been running around the coast of Britain. I needed an adventure. I needed something bigger. I've got a very old um, fantasy of going around the coast of Britain. I've had it for a long time. I was given for Christmas, uh, Christmas before last, just a little run around the world by Rosie Swale. So this was the, the one that really moved the vague fantasy uh, into something uh, specific. I suppose with other people it was kind of it was kind of into the Arctic or up Everest or something. So I left here 15 months and arrived back on Wednesday. The objective was to keep my, the sea on my right and keep it in view, uh, which is easier said than done. Having decided to do it, I then thought uh, I'd really like to run for a charity. Um, and I knew of Ecologia, based here in Findhorn. They work with children. I went and met Liza and said, hey, should we do this together? And at the end of half an hour, um, Liza said yes. I mean, I left Liza's uh, and, and the Ecologia office and went up the road and a friend came along and I told him, and he said, oh, you're going away, are you? Um, what are you going to do with your flat? And I said, well, I'm renting it out. And he said, I'll take it. So that was a great day. That was a great day. Everything came together. Day three, 8.30 in the morning, set off at 7.30. Slept in a barn last night, courtesy of Stuart McCombie, just next to the Waste Waterworks, just outside Inverness. And then heading in to the city itself, fine-tune my rucksack, do a bit of work, and then over to the Black Isle. So this is where I was walking earlier in the week. There's the, to the right, there's the port of Ardesia, then the vast bay of Nairn, and I guess Nairn, somewhere along there. So here I am at Port Mahomoc to spend the night in the Carnegie Hall. A morning of Facebooking, work emails. It takes me a long time and it's been raining all day. I was hoping it might stop for now but it hasn't. So it's the first day really that I've got all my waterproofs on, give my test and instead of going up to Tabat to the lighthouse um, I'm just going to head to Tain. Um, so, so this is kind of late March, April, early May. So we're still in the wet season. Uh, it's just wind and rain every day. John O'Groats, not quite the most northern part of the Scottish mainland. That's over at Dunnet Head, but the iconic north of Scotland. The morning, it's Sunday morning. Uh, it's about 10 o'clock, I'm just setting off on a 30 mile plus run to Durness. So the big thing with journeying on foot is what do you do with your stuff? So you minimise your stuff on where do you put it? And either you put it on something like the rack on a bicycle, but then you're limited about where you, you can go because you've got to take your wheels with you. Um, so the great thing about being on foot is that you can go anywhere, um, but you have the burden of your stuff. Here I am running with some of my cow brothers. I'm, I was trundling along and then they came charging up behind. There's a lock on the west coast um, that, that the American Marines um, were stationed at during the war. And um, to illustrate, and there's a little plaque that one Marine said to illustrate his loneliness. He said, um, he said, after six months I was talking to myself. After 12 months I was talking to the sheep. And after 18 months they were talking to me. Uh, and there's a lot of relationship with the animals in the field. So there's the sheep, the cows, um, and the bullocks. So the bullocks are very, very special. God, look, the whole field, look, the, 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 the others are coming over now. <laughs> and 
and they're all so curious. They come, you stand by the field at the gate and they come. Uh, two will come, the whole field will come. I've stood at the gate and I've had 50 young bullocks uh, around me and one, two, three, I ha offer my hand and they will come and they will lick. And for me, this was, um, you know, all my craving for touch. I had very little touch with humans. We're going to do a little, going to do a little film of you all, because then, then, oh, 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 hello, oh, hello, <laughs> hello, my friend. <laughs> Just been crying my eyes out. Uh, it's Sunday and this is my hundredth day on the road and I'm at Gretna about to cross into England. I'm in the shopping centre. <laughs> And uh, and this band has just started playing, so this seems a fitting time for to just listen to them. As I say, farewell to Scotland. So the first seven weeks was in the wind and the rain of, of late March, April, early May in the most northern and westerly parts of Britain. And I thought a lot about Fines and Rosie Swell. What is it about these people? That, and I, I concluded that they find an edge and then they go, they, they find a new one. <laughs> so they've got a capacity to not retreat from the edge and 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 just keep pushing it and pushing it that this is my understanding of these people did i reach an edge sometimes when i was really wet and i was tired i mean i don't know anybody you don't know anybody don't know where i am often don't, i don't know where i'm going to eat and i have a propensity of my own mind to to not be good enough Everything is not enough. I've not done enough miles today. I, I'm not extreme enough. Um, and I kept, I realised I kept comparing myself with Rosie Swale, which is not a good thing to do. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think probably two times I felt I was at my edge. So this is a hello video. I haven't really done one for a good while. Uh, I'm in Wales. Crossed the River Dee yesterday, early yesterday morning, Saturday. It's now Sunday brunch time. You'll be tucking in, I hope. And I'm walking against the wind. So the wind's fierce. Uh, tried running, it's just too hard work. So I'm walking from Prestatin to Rill, where I'm going to have breakfast. And uh, uh, and this is this is where I am. The Wirral and Liverpool, very distant. Um, there's some wind turbine, loads of wind turbines out there. This is, this is offshore wind turbine land and the tide is kind of, I think it's at its, uh, at its peak, at its most in. Um, and there's real ahead and right in the distance is the hills of Anglesey. So I decided not to do Anglesey. It's really easy doing Wales. The, uh, the coast path was set up here many years ago and uh, and it's blue little stickers there's a dog coming for me to bite my leg and um, so it's well signposted and easy peasy which doesn't actually make the adventure quite so thrilling that the path is all kind of set out and signposted so I have to do adventures every now and again for a little bit of danger along a railway line climb something rusty um, 
just to keep my excitement up. In raising money for a charity that I then believed in but was very abstract for me, um, uh, as soon as the British, the British uh, uh, are into charities, but people kind of think this guy is doing something weird, he must be doing it for a charity, and they ask, and something slightly shifts in their psyche. You know, there's, a, there's an engagement and a preparedness to help that's a bit more than just helping me because they're helping the charity and they're up for that. So I'm here at uh, uh, Divine Kitchen and um, Amy's holding the camera. Uh, she's given me lunch and a good roll and tea. And I'm about to get rid of, after 1,000 and a few miles, my shoes, which I've had since Helensborough near Glasgow. And I'm also gonna get rid of two pairs of socks. So I had two new ones from Light of Scarlet, I had one in Fockabers, best running shop in the world. And so we're going to come over here now, and I should recycle them, but I need to get rid of them. So we're going to drop these wonderful shoes with worn out soles and big holes in the sides in the One, two, three, whoa! The fact that it's around the corner is, it was important. I, I, you know, I support myself, Greenpeace Oxfam, uh, you know, so they're national and big and remote. So the idea of doing something for somebody local and the fact they did uh, they work with children. These were the two fundamental pillars of that. They work with kids who are desperate. Um, they're working with kids who, who are largely, um, their material circumstances, their psychological and emotional circumstances are all in pretty difficult, traumatic states. When I look at that and I look at my own affluence and the affluence around me, it's a no-brainer um, and it's easy for me to get motivated by that. Two days staying with Tina, Tina Mert, here she is. Uh, we're just off, I'm heading down to the Lizard and need to find somewhere to stay and Tina's off to pamper the world. I'm at Lizard, Lizard Point, there's the lighthouse in the background. It's been a day, uh, it's been a few days of landmarks. Uh, Friday, Land's End. Sunday, 3,000 miles. Today, the most southerly point. It's about 11 o'clock mm. and Nigel is taking me back to Teamworth Railway Station. Mm. Uh, and because, then, we've, because we've just uh, discovered you didn't pay. Oh, we just for, discovered I didn't pay for my for drink. So another way for me of engaging more closely with the charity uh, was to take on um, godparenting. I want Orion near Katesh, uh, Vanya, and uh, Patrick in, uh, in uh, Catch in Meru. Um, so we did that quite early on. Patrick was a little bit more prominent, um, you know, and I had a, a couple of videos and um, and he wrote letters to me early on, which it took me a while to reply, but I then finally replied. And uh, so, and, and, and with Vanya, Vanya wrote to me and they sent me photographs and I replied to him as well. So there's, a, there's the beginnings of a connection there. So I've just left Rochester, uh, coming up this, what's called the Saxon Shore Trail. And um, I'm on the River Medway and heading to London. So this is an appeal. So if anybody's up for getting me some publicity, uh, me, the charity, um, and giving the people of London a story, then give me a call. It's the 27th of March, 2017. And I set off on Sunday, the 27th of March, 2016, Easter Sunday. I thought it was about 5,000 miles, and I thought it'd take about a year. Uh, a year's up and I'm in fucking Clapton on sea. I've been feeling bored um, and lost a lot of my motivation to do this. And I'm feeling disappointed that I haven't finished. And the reason I haven't finished is of the 365 days I've been on the road, a hundred of them, 98 I think it is. Uh, I haven't been on the road, I've been working. So since I left London, 
I've just been flat. Well, we intended to raise 10,000, um, which Ecologia suggested, and I thought, well, that's not that much. Um, uh, but I thought I was happy. <laughs> I didn't want the pressure. I didn't even want a total to begin with. I didn't want anything. I didn't want pressure. I was pursuing freedom, and this was another, another um, constraint. Um, but I eased into that, and, um, and then we got to, to Land's End, and we were around eight or nine, and we thought, OK, let's double it. I mean, South Shields, we're on our way to the ferry to cross the time, and Brian is holding the camera, and Jill here, they're from the local running club. We're on the Scottish border, and as I approached the border, I was feeling delirious, and for some reason kept going, oh, I the new, like an absolutely nuts Scotsman, who probably isn't a Scotsman does that, but this one did. So, here we are, here's the sign, and here's the I'm about to enter Scotland after ten and a half months of being away. <laughs> so that was the esque. North River, and I am now in Aberdeenshire! Let's hear it! Should have done is carried a bucket. You know, my journey here to this interview this morning, there's 62 quid in my bucket. As, as somebody who's nearing the end of their 50s, I was curious about how fit I could be. I've always been a bit of a scaredy puss. I'm, I'm frightened of getting cold, I don't like getting wet. Being outside um, and being with the sea and being away from people uh, had its struggle but also had its um, merits. But a marathon runner has to learn to keep going when they're tired. Every time I'm feeling flat and bored and fed up and depleted, where do I find energy? The managing of that shadow, I would hope I will find that I've improved as a human being. There's a need to, for me to have um, something to do with kids. I will be in uh, in Kenya this year before the end of the year. I also want to go to Orion, so I want to meet these two boys that I help. Uh, so the fantasy at the moment is to horse ride uh, through a continent with, with somebody who will be an accomplished horse rider because I am about to start learning.